Please look at me when you're ready. So for me, this is the top of the second page measure 16, please, the measure before you enter. Yeah, you, uh, well, I know you've tried, that's your default. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna clam in and you're gonna work in here. Like try some Tyrannosaurus Rex. Yeah. That's what you're gonna do. Here we go. <laughs> This one. I haven't used this one in a while. Great. Okay, so we've talked about the body mapping. Yeah. And now I understand, because I have another valuable piece of information, that you're a saxophonist. Mm -hmm. 
Having been a clarinetist, I know what the problem is, and I, you'll get over it. <laughs> Part of it is, why would anybody play the saxophone? Yeah, but no, I'm only kidding, it's a joke. <laughs> My joke was earlier, I said, you know what the difference between um, a saxophone and a lawnmower is? And he says, no. I said, it's a vibrato. The, um, <laughs> um, okay, so what's happening as you conduct, which is getting you into problems, you notice his thumbs coming up. Yeah? What that means is your hand is out of balance. You're favoring your radius instead of your ulna. Now, we've talked about this. This is not, I'm not throwing terms around. So, to get the balance back, this is a cool trick. I think it'll work. Okay. I'm going to want you to conduct like this. Just for now. Sure. And, okay. So, what you should be registering, you should be asking yourself these questions. Miles, does this feel different than what I was doing? Whatever the answer is, that's the correct feeling. The other one is X nay, wrong nay. Okay. Okay? Sure. So here we go. So conduct this way. Same spot. <laughs> Because all of a sudden you're engaging the ulna. Did you notice when he was giving sweeping gestures, he was going this way with this bone, which made you sing with more sustenuto? Sure. And so what this does is it just puts, so what you were doing before was this. Thumb was way up, which means you're kind of leading with your thumb. Okay. And this part of your arm is essentially dead to you. So if you put a stick in your hand, you'd really feel uncomfortable with a baton because you're all out of balance. Sure. So what I'm doing is recalibrating the balance to put, put both bones in use, and then you have more expressivity because of it. Okay. Did that, so how did that feel? It, it probably felt radically really weird. Yeah. Can I tell you why this is? So show me how you hold your saxophone. Yeah, and this thumb does what? Supports the instrument? Yeah, and this one is the register key. So that's his mode of music making. The thumbs are important in wind playing. Clarinet, my clarinet rests on my thumb. And the thumb, this is the most awkward fingering on clarinet because you've got the thumb hole, then you've got to roll your finger around. So the thumb has to assume a bizarre position. So you're being Mr. Saxman. Look, 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 look. Yeah. And all he did to transform was go, I'm a conductor now. <laughs> okay, so we've got to change that. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's the issue. So I just noticed that I did not see sure. that this afternoon. Yeah? True. Yeah. So you want to try again now? I would still conduct with this. Yeah. It's, yeah. Going to. it's weird, but I will. It's weird, but it's going to fix your problem. What other movement are you doing, by the way? Uh, two. Okay. So I think that I'll that. Two. Just start yeah. a little bit with this. trying to go out. It, it's <laughs> true. Still, and you want to, you just, so here's the other issue. Uh, and then we move on to the other movement. The issue is when one flattens the hand too much, the thumb assumes a, a, the role of a separate hand. We're the only creatures that have this thing. So if it goes too far up, it actually functions as a separate hand. So the way around that is by, by using the curve of your wrist, your wrist is actually here, and rounding the hand so it can't come up and be an independent hand. Sure. Yeah, and, 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 and that just, the, you'll get that. Sure. Let's go to the next moment. I love your energy, I love, I love your knowledge of the score, you're a very good musician, let's do the next one.
love everything you are doing gesturally, except you gotta take all the muscle out of it. You're pushing them out of tune. Okay. No, there's too much. When you, it doesn't take a lot of muscle to move a bone. You're over muscling it, and the minute you do, if you're really listening, you'll hear the sound go out of tune. It's yeah. too much muscular pressure. So move the way you're doing and take all the muscle out. When I'm conducting, I don't feel any any of the musculature working at all. None. It's like my arms are floating and moving, and bones are just moving with a little bit of a muscular something. Now, now Marcato is another thing. Sure. So take the muscle out. Let's start right on the, the, the base the entrance. The first entrance? Yeah, the first entrance. Sure. That's where the base is routed to. Start pushing. Sorry. Yeah, I'll give you one. <clears throat> give, the, give the bar before so they can press the press. Okay. The bar before you sure. Okay. color and breathe the color. Okay. The, what's happening is a default kind of gang warfare back here. <laughs> yeah. You're not the, you're, you're not breathing the color, you're not hearing the color. Had most remarkable thing in the recording session we just did. We were doing a very very diff the, well we were doing the Ubi Caritas of Paul Mila that was at the Royal Wedding. And uh, Paul was, the composer was there and he wanted us to he wanted me to do a recording. There are two chords in there that are sudden changes of incredible color. Mm -hmm. And I have a kid in the choir who's a synesthete. He, he hears every sound in color. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I did this, but I turned to John and I said, John, those two chords, what color are they? He said, the first one is violet, but then he said, the second one goes beige. And I thought, really? He said, yeah. He says, harmonically, What's happening is the overtones in that first chord, he went on, and then he said in beige, he says there's almost no dissonance, so it's beige, and very vague beige. And I'm going, what have I got to lose? The choir heard that, O-M-G. And I know better, I know I need to breathe color, but when we said it, so just breathe the color is the bottom line, there's no color here, it's kind of generic cardboard. And that's your problem, not theirs. They're good singers. The bar before the ear entrance. <clears throat> Tongue is up all the time. Mm -hmm. So, grab a pitch, sorry. <laughs> Tongue is up for all those vowels, including a. Eh. <coughs> Some of you are flopping around on the a eh vowel, and the pitch is going. The tongue stays up all the time. Now, try it. Put your tongue up. <laughs>
are conducting students here, there was so much going on there that we shared that I had to do as the music was on so that he could hear the changes. Let me summarize them. Um, when the line started, you were gripping down. Yep. So I kept pulling up his head because that was affecting the pitch. Whenever he didn't want more line, he was doing this side to break that habit. Then the other thing, when the sopranos are entering in that, that tessitura, they need head. So you have to, and also the altos are in a treacherous area. So I raised the whole gesture up so that you kept spinning as much in head tone. Because he was down here, and you just can't sing that way. I mean, they, they kind of, it was flat. Then they came in with this chesty sound, and that's, that's a no-go for me. What you'd have to work on is to find the right gesture to help the tenors, because you were so high, it was kind of hard for them to kind of get the, the, the shimmer in the sound. But you'll get there. We broke a lot of habits, a lot, and it was really beautiful. Talk to, what did that feel like? Weird, strange, good, great? Yes, all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, about, it's about finding the things that will cause this particular choir. I'm not so sure I know all the answers, but if I worked with you a long time, I'd know what bug is the push. And I don't like to spend a lot of time talking to singers. You know, I give a lecture and I say, I don't think my job is to tell singers how to sing. My job is to cause them to sing well. I think that, that, that's the nature of what I think I do. And I, I try to find those things with that unleash, and with the knowledge of voice, certainly I'm not the village idiot, but, but all of this makes into a beautiful musical meal, and you're very close. That was really good. I mean, it just, so we did a ton of stuff, yikes. I need to get paid more. <laughs>